I don't know. <laughs> uh, Ibrahim? Hello? It, 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 it seems that it, it's already been uh, streamed. It seems. But, oh. uh, yeah. Okay. It works, Sorry, it works can... fine. No, it works, please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, will it be recorded? I think that Ibrahim does not hear us. Ibrahim, do you hear us? <clears throat> I don't think so. One one thing that I I I always hear, you know, when you talk with people in Brazil, it's it's the noise of birds. I don't know if you all can hear this, but probably Manuel has some. <laughs> it's 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 typical. It's impressive. Yes. Yes. In fact, we are recording it. Uh, we are recording it on YouTube, so we will have a link, and I will share this link in Blackboard after uh, the seminar. Okay. So, Professor, can you hear me now? Do I start? We do hear you, but I think there's something with the speaker of Ibrahim. He does not hear us at all. So, Gertz, can you hear? Yes. Yes. Can you hear us, Ibrahim? I'm not the main guy here, but I would suggest that maybe we start and then uh, meanwhile, Ibrahim will find out how to get the sound or Ricardo, what do you think? Yeah, maybe this is the best option. Uh, so let's start uh, Manuel, because okay. yeah. Okay, so good morning everybody again. Uh, as professor say, I am a PhD candidate from the, at the University of Campinas. I am working in my research with Professor Ricardo Torres and Professor Edo Pedrini as my advisors. And I am researching about tiny deep neural network approaches to, to test detection. So these are the main points that I will be, be covered today in the presentation. For the motivation and challenges, the, the problem of the state-of-the-art methods, some related work, the main objective of our research, and PILITEX and PILITEX++, which are our first contributions, and future work. So let's start with motivation and challenges. Nowadays, everyone, almost all the population has access to some kind, some kind of digital camera, especially because of the use of smartphones. So with this, a lot of, a huge amount of applications has, has emerged during the last years. In this context, some, some of those applications were proposed for for use in test detection. For example, in this case, the authors proposed a method for, for looking for, for text involving text related with, with traffic sign. 
another interesting research here where the where the authors trying to 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 work with image retrieval in this research basically they they had a, a data set of videos where text was was looking the in the videos then they were looking for some kind of keywords inside the videos and use those keywords for for users when users were looking for some kind of content they they use the the keywords extracted from the videos using uh, test detection methods a very interesting area that is used in text detection is assistive applications in this case the, the method proposed by Bajid in 2014 helps blind people. Uh, how it works? First, uh, using glasses, this the glasses took uh, an image capturing the, the scene. Then the object of interest is, is detected. And inside this object of interest, some text regions are are extracted, then crop it to, to pass through a recognizer. And the recognizer and the system as final result send a, an audio for, for the blind person. Last year, ICDAR competition proposed a very interesting challenge involving a syntax visual question answering. So in this kind of, of challenges, a very interesting one, we were working with text detection and involving the, the context of the same too. As we can see in these examples, the first one, what is the price of the, of the bananas per kilogram? So in this context, we have all of these examples such as what are the red sign saying? Where is this train going? what is the exit number on the street sign. So this is a very interesting and very challenging scenario when we have to not just detect an object or just detect the, the text, but have a, a knowledge about the, the scene. So here I'm going to present some of the, the challenges that are present in the, in the text, in text detection field. First, in the in the real world, there exists a lot of kind of font styles, which makes more difficult the the work of the of the methods. Moreover, one of the of the main problems for for current methods is the, the natural background, because as we can see in these images, there exists some several backgrounds that that are very difficult for the for the math that are very easy to, to confuse with with text or like like text for example the the trees of the the different colors in a wall the the windows of of the buildings so these are very challenging scenarios additionally in some images we have some blurring problems where the the text is not so clear, no, it's not clear enough. So it's another difficult scenario. Images where, where the text is occluded by some kind of structure between the, the camera and the final, the final text. Additionally, in in dissertation, we we have horizontal and vertical orientations. And more important, there exists some data sets and some real kind of tests present in, in daily in daily routines when there the test has some kind of, of orientation as we can see in this in, in these images. So it's another another very challenging scenario. Furthermore, depending on how the the picture how the photo was was taken we have this kind of perspective projections 
were the typical bonding boxes, rectangular bonding boxes that are used in object detection are, are not a, enough to, to catch this kind of, of test. So here we, we need another kind of representation for our final bonding boxes. Here we have some, some examples, some images where different kind of different kind of languages could appear in the in the same images. So it's a, a very very difficult scenario because of the nature of each language, where some of them are all worked by line text level or word level and the way how that kind of language split the words is very different. So the structure of, of the phrases or the, the text or of each one of the of the language is very different. So makes this detection more, more difficult. What is the problem in the state of the art? Here we have three prints from the dashboard of the competitions. Ikidar 2013, Ikidar 2015, and multilingual data set Ikidar 2019. The top 10 methods that I am presenting here have something in common. All of them are based in deep neural network models. So also in text detection area, deep neural network models are a state of the art. What is the problem? All of them produce a very heavy deep neural network models involving millions or billions of parameters, which is difficult for, for several, for a kind of, of devices processing this kind of networks. Even some research is trying to, to build embedded systems using not just one neural network, but several branches instead for, for improving their, their results. Their, those kind of approaches improve the, the results, but especially they don't have concerns about the, the problem that this kind of, of neural neural models has in having in device on, in devices with computational constraints. Here are the, the three, three main points of, of these problems. The first one involving storage, how much memory exactly do, you, do we need for, for run this kind of, of networks in our, in our devices, in our smartphones? What is the processing time, especially for real-time applications? And the battery problem, which is a main concern for the, for the for device, for this kind of devices, especially for smartphones and tablets, is a, a huge concern in all of this processing time or the amount of memory that we need are involving more, consuming more, more energy. Nowadays, there are some works proposing to use of, of cloud services. So they are focused on divide and conquer, maybe execute half of the work in the device and another half in the, in the cloud. But for real-time applications, uh, it, this kind of approach is not good enough yet because it depends on the on, on the bottlenecks that we can we can have in the in the cloud of the latency of the network in, in some specific areas so for real time applications it's, it's hard to, to use this kind of, of approach. Another interesting scenario that we have during the in the in the test detection area. First, we have to, to train a model. Here, as an example, we have an uh, English text model already trained. So during testing, we, we could find this kind of, of images when, as we can see, this, this method works very well. But what happened when, during the testing phase, we found another kind of languages? This is now as an open set problem. So during the testing, we could find a text from, from languages that, that didn't appear during the, the training stage. This generates a, a problem. 
if we have generally we have a specific recognizer for each one of the languages so we have a model trained for for english text for example and we run this model over this kind of images we are sending a several false positives for the recognizer and the recognizer is is time consuming very time consuming so in our research we are trying to 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 do some kind of filtering of these kind of problems during the test dotation phase in order to to pass only a specific or more filtered bonding boxes for the for the recognizer in order to 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 consuming uh, less time. Here I'm going to present some related work involving the, the main areas of the of the main kind of approaches on the test detection. We have the typical bonding ball regression that is used in object detection too. The first example is text boxes plus plus which is a method that uses uh, the VGG16 as backbone for feature extraction. And then some layers from the SSD, the single shoot detector are adding at the end before the final prediction. This method produces bonding boxes as final result. <clears throat> before that, the, the method performs some kind of a maximum suppression for, for filtering overlapping bonding boxes. The, this is another work, is an extension of Textbox++, in which after getting the, the final bonding boxes, they pass through a rotation, they, they perform some rotation into the, the feature maps in order to produce an, a method which is rotation invariant. This kind of, of methods produce two, two outputs, the rotation, which is the upsets of the, of the bonding boxes, and for each one of those bonded boxes, uh, a classification is, is performed. So in order to, to know if the bonded box is covering some text region or, or background region. In the cementation area, we have to work in the, into the pixel level. So the input image pass some, some kind of of neural network and then a, a pixel a pixel level evaluation where each pixel is is annotated as as text or or background in order to to form this kind of, of segmentation and then most of the of the methods in this case pixel link works with link prediction uh, looking for the eight neighbors of each of each pixel and then some kind of a ruling or some kind of rules for for creating instance segmentations are, are performing and then as final result because of the especially for the competitions the we need to to present bonding boxes as as final result they they found the, the minimal bonding box covering all the pieces that belong to to an instance segmentation here we have craft, which is a state of the art in, in some data sets. It's a, a very interesting method that work at charter level going through. So unlike other, other methods which work with word label going through, this method works with character label going through. So this method performs basically two parts. The first part is to looking for, for characters. And the second part is looking for affinity boxes in order to, to create instance, the final split words. Another kind of, of approach that we have in, in the text detection area are the end-to-end. The -end. Here we have Fox and Max Test Spotter, which basically performs test detection and take recognition, test detection, take recognition in the in one pass. So all the bonding boxes that are produced or are generated are predicted by the text detection branch, then pass for a text recognition branch in order to, to give the, the final results. And this part is very important for, for filtering false positives. Here is a similar approach. This Network use 
as based in Mask RCNN network, which is a very well known network for, for cementation. So first bonding boats are generated and then pass from mass branch where cementation is performed along with charter cementation and the, the recognizer in order to, to give this final results. Which have in common these methods, they use heavy models, all of them use VGG16 or, or ResNet. Their models are ranging from 80 megabytes to more than 350 megabytes. They are data independent, most of them. So they, they need some specific time of some specific size of image for, for those methods, depending on the, on the data set that's some kind of processing or post-processing depending on the data set. None of them was evaluated in a mobile environment and none of them uh, take into account the open set problem. So with this, we have a subjective of our research to propose an efficient and effective tiny network network approaches for multilingual, multi-oriented text detection with very special focus on architectures oriented to mobile devices. So we're looking for, for architectures for directly execute on mobile devices and some kind of approaches for compression for for getting an even more compressive model before the the execution on, on this kind of devices. There exists a lot of kind of, of data sets, public available data sets that we are using for, for our research. Here are some examples. The first one is a synthetic data set, but a very realistic data set too, as you can see. The second one, an Ikidar 2011, presents uh, images which are digital created. In the Ikidar 2013 and Ikidar 2015 are, are data sets involving text and in, in the difference between these two these two data sets is because uh, the Ikidar 2015 presents some vertical case of text. And in the last row, we have multilingual data sets. The first one, MSRA, it contains English and Chinese text. And as we can see, not just horizontal or vertical, vertical text, we have a text with some kind of orientation too. A multilingual data set 2019 presents 10 language text with uh, coming from, from 10 different languages. And main metrics were using recall, precision information, and more important, taking into account the, the tools of, offered by the, the competition. The official competition and our, our models are evaluating to the, the frames per second that can process and the, the model size in terms of megabytes and, and parameters. So here I'm going to present some of the results uh, that we have until now in our research. The first one, we call it Pili text. So first we, we look for a mobile network network in order to, to make some adaptations on them for, for the problem of text detection. So we found PiliNet, which is a very interesting mobile network network proposed by one and all in 2018 in the NIPS conference. As we can see, this, this network has very interesting results of performing the results of well-known networks like MobileNet, V2, MobileNet, and ShuffleNet. Especially the, the processing time, the speed of this of the network very, very, very impressive when a floating point involving 16 bits is, is used. So it's so a very interesting network, and that's why we we chose this, this network as our backbone. Then for the hesitation, we, we made some adaptations of, of this network. Here we have the, the structure of our network. And so first we have here the PiliNet, which has five stages involving some kind of of different convolutional, convolutional blocks for structuring features. And then we we use five uh, five five layers as a source layer for for test detection. So over these layers, we we use different from object detection, which which always uh, 
use uh, square filters. Here we use rectangular filters uh, of size three by five in order to capture text because text have long aspect ranges. So these kind of filters uh, allow us to to find this kind of, of representation and, and more important, some kind of, of orientation with with the test. So these five layers were used for for extracting tests after all the process of feature, feature extraction. And then the results pass for a softmax layer and before the final result, we apply a no maximum suppression taking into account the, the intersection of the union of the, of the boundary boxes. Additionally, we, we use a simplified version of SSD. In this case, we didn't use the 30 by 30 feature map of, of the SSD, of the original SSD, because it's a little more time consuming and uh, the model size increase and uh, there is not a lot of difference in, in regarding to the effectiveness of, of our method. So basically we use a feature map of 19 by 19 using the the layer from the lightest, the last, the last layer of this of the stage three, ten by ten feature map in the last layer of stage four, and the feature maps of five, five, three, and one of the SSD as an extra layers for obtaining we the the feature maps that we are we are using for final detection. With this, we found a. Uh, our new model, which is 40 megabytes with 10 millions of parameters. And this is at least two times smaller than the state of the art methods. Using just one single input size of 768 pixels, our network is able to process 18.64 frames per second and in a multi-scale approach where we use four scales of images, we run at two, two, almost three frames per, per second. Here we have some results. The purple one is our method, Billy text. As you can see, this is the smallest one between the, the other methods. The size of the circle represents the, the the size of, of the model of each one of these of these methods. So we have interesting results, uh, very promising results. We have to, to improve in in recall we are missing some kind of, of tests. So we have to work on that. This is on Ikidar 2013 data set, which involves English tests. Similar similar thing happens in 2015 data set where we have a very interesting, very competitive results a very good trade-off between effectiveness and efficiency, considering the model size of our, of our model. And more important, because we are focused on multilingual scenarios, here we have our result. And our result is very close to the state of the art methods. And our model is at least two times smaller than, than the, the best method in this, in, this, in this data set. So it's a very promising network. In terms of frames per second, we now had a, a problem because our our best results come from came from the multi-scale approach that we have. But when we use a multi-scale approach involving four scales of, of input images, we our our processing time drops dramatically. So we are we're working on on it. And uh, a new proposal is PDTX++. So instead of using just the, the PDNEC as backbone, we do some research in order to find a more specific network for, for our approach. So in a general way, here is the, the same backbone that I presented before, because uh, we can't uh, and share with you this this network yet because we submitted for a journal the last week so it's under review but maybe for our next talk we can go deeper in this in our in this proposal in our proposal but and the annual depletion study when we we evaluated the impact of each one of the components it was each one of the of the kind of layer of the kind of convolutional blocks that we have here in 
in our network, we, uh, we evaluate to the aspect radius, the number of prior boxes that we're generating. And, and more important, we, we execute a, a study involving a real scenario, a real mobile scenario with three commercial, three commercial smartphones. And we found very interesting results not just running or executing our, our network on mobile devices, but another method of the state of the art too. And the problems that the state of the art methods have when the input image is, is changing, especially because of the best results that, that the, the methods reach are using uh, big, big scales of images, maybe 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels so or have a very big image for, for being processing in, in devices with computational constraints. But our new model size has a 27 megabytes and 7 millions of parameters, which is 3 million more parameters less than our previous version. And it is at least uh, three times smaller than the state of the art. Here we have some visual results of our network. This is a very accurate network. With, we have hit here different kind of, of tests, digital accurate tests, uh, SM tests. And here we have for the MSRA dataset, English and, um, English and, and Chinese tests. The difference between is depending on the data set, the, this data set works on line level grant through and these other data sets works at word level grant through. But we don't have to do uh, modifications in, in our network for this kind of, of scenario, just modifying the, the grant through. Uh, some interesting points that our network uh, outputs not just rectangular, but instead it outputs quadrilaterals, so a little more a, a little more is a, a kind of shape more more free to, to be according this kind of this kind of representation when perspective projections is is a little difficult to to represent with with the the normal or the, the common rectangular bony boxes here are different kind of tests at which we can capture during the the inference and this the last image here involving arabic and uh, an english text some cases when we have to work that mistakes for from our network are very very difficult cases depending on the because of the different texture of this of this kind of test the different kind of of font styles in the background it is very hard to very hard for our network is very confusing and a lot of false positives are generating in this in this kind of scenario as some font styles in in a vertical orientation are, are difficult too as future works we are we're looking for evaluating approaches such feature pyramid network in order to to cut our multi multi-scale evaluation that drops dramatically our, our processing time. So this is a point that we have to evaluate uh, what, what is impact of using a feature pyramid network, which involves a, a multi-scale feature during the, the feature extraction, but consuming more, more memory. And the use of other mobile backbones too, and the proposal of other mobile box, backbones. As imitation approaches, and because we're using until now just bony ball regression, we're looking for for trying to, to merge these these two approaches, bony ball regression and segmentation, especially for this kind of tests, arbitrary shape at curve test when rectangular or quadrilateral bony ball representation is, is not enough for covering this kind of, of tests. But always all our concern is the, the speed of the of the processing time of the, the model size, how much it takes our, our model running in, in a mobile devices. So this is our main, our main concern. So thank you, this is my presentation. If you have some question, feel free to ask. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's, it's really very educative and uh, very nice knowledge.
Thank you. Uh, please, uh, anyone has any questions to Manuel? Yes, Gertz? Uh, yes, hi. Uh, thanks a lot um, for, um, I think it was a very structured presentation and a good introduction in the problems and uh, what, what challenges are faced. Uh, so I, I noted some questions. Uh, first of all, I'm not that familiar with the area, so sorry if uh, some of the no questions problem. are. Um, so when you tested your algorithm, on what kind of device did you measure the performance that you get? Okay, three frames per second, on what kind of device? Uh, I performed some experiments in three commercial devices. Uh, I can't say a lot because of the of our work is under review, but was yeah. involving different kind of, of devices with different uh, different uh, different types of memory, different memory yeah, okay. elements of them involving different scenarios, uh, very accessible devices. Manuel, I, I think you can you can mention the the models. I think that's no problem. There's no problem. So, so no. Okay, so we used three three commercial smartphones. The first okay. one was a, a Motorola, Motorola G6, which has three gigabytes of memory. The another one was a, a Xiaomi that has yes. so, uh, gigabytes of memory. Yeah, sorry. So for me, the exact models are not that interesting. I was just thinking, did you measure that on a computer with a very it was like desktop computer with a very powerful GPU or on those realistic devices? So then no. you, you measured on those smartphones. So that's that's a good point because then you measure on realistic devices which could use your approach. Yes, we, we use the real devices. We, we run on it, on them, and we found some very interesting results, mm. especially because of the size of the image and the, the size of the model of the different methods. Mm -hmm. We had some problems, some memory problems. Mm. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I have um, another question and then one suggestion. Or uh, so, if when you compared your solution with others, the frames per second actually in some cases it was not higher than other models. So I'm, I'm thinking what kind of parameters did you try to optimize then that, okay, we want to have something small and fast and in the end it does not turn out to be the fastest one. But why is this memory so important that it's smaller, that it's, uh, why is it important to have a 40 megabytes of memory because the smartphones have quite huge memories as well. Or does it is it a GPU memory which is limited or? Uh, no, the the forty megabytes that I mentioned it is the the model size, uh, which is, it will be the 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 storage that we require for 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 a model. But when you try to run this this kind of of models in uh, mobile devices, you you need to put the the model into the the, the memory the the image that you are processing to into the memory the feature map that you're extracting during the process are located into the memory so it's more time it's more memory consuming that that just for the megabytes for that we have even even using devices with three gigabytes of, of memory or until six gigabytes of, of memory we had some problems with the state of the art methods because the feature maps that they are they are giving us results they are located into the memory and we are running out of, of memory in some in some cases okay so basically it's uh the speed is maybe secondary so the primary thing you optimize is the size or, or the memory usage of the model because some of the state-of-art approaches they don't run at all it's they need so much memory that it's just not practically possible to fit them into those smartphones is that exactly yeah, okay. the, the state of the art methods they most of them use an, uh, a very big image for their best results but using those models with those size of images in a device with computational constraints is it's almost impossible mm, okay thank you 
yes. Yes, Gert, please. Uh, as I had one more question or suggestion. So uh, if we consider smartphones, one smartphone, okay, it's a powerful device, but if you consider that there are really billions of devices out there, is, is that one possible? I, I'm just, I have been thinking about this, that we could, if we could distribute a task, split it in, let's say, 100 different pieces and then distribute it to 100 mobile phones, then you can suddenly have a lot of computing power. So these text recognition tasks, text extraction tasks, is it something that could be split into pieces and parallelized? Or is it a process that it's impossible to distribute it and run it in parallel on 100 different smartphones at the same time? Is uh, so it's possible to, to split or do some work in the parallelizing the, the code, parallelizing the, the process inside the, 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 the device itself. But I, I don't know if I'm quite sure if I understood the, the question, but splitting the, the process. So I'm okay. just several devices will have just one result. No, I'm just imagining that, uh, let's say you have the 2000 by 2000 pixel picture, you can split it mm -hmm. maybe four parts, thousand by thousand, four images distributed mm -hmm. to four phones. They process them, those images in parallel, and then you get the results back. So it's similar as you have this SETI at home and uh, folding at home programs where you get give one task to many users and then cooperatively they find a solution. Nowadays, we have so many mobile yes. devices which are idling mm -hmm. most of the time. So we could just I imagine that in the future, that will be one computing direction that maybe, for example, I as a user get some kind of money. If I allow to use my phone to run some kind of computations, yes. I participate in a marketplace. Someone else, is po someone else is posting a task which is distributed among users. Each gets one cent maybe for that calculation. Yes. You pay, I don't know, 10 cents to do one image processing and you get... Uh, Yes, Would this be possible for this task? It is possible. It's possible. Uh, you can split this kind of of or process into the devices and then get a, a final result. But in some cases, like uh, real time applications, uh, you could have problems because if some one of the devices that you are working on have some problems with the processing, you have to wait for 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 the result and to, until you process the final result. So for real time application, maybe it's a a little difficult in this kind of scenario, but uh, I already have some proposals about divide and conquer where you process half of the work or only the part of your work in your device and split the rest of, of the others and then get uh, the final result. Okay, thank you. That's all from me. Uh, yes, uh, any other questions? I have a question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Me, yes, me. Yeah, Manuel uh, yes. gets asked about the frames per second because you know the result for Billy text was not that uh, I would say impressive. You know they, they in terms of frames per second, but I don't yes. remember uh, how much we improved if we improved when in this new implementation the Billy text plus plus. Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember exactly, but we we gained some. Some speed, I think, is almost four, four frames per second. But we we are with that problem of the multi scale that we had to we we need to 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 review because when we are processing our best results coming from the multi scale version, but using the multi scale version is is dropping our our speed because when we use just uh, one scale, 768 as a percent, we were able to process until 21 frames per second, if I am not wrong. But in terms of frames per second, we don't have a measure yet too, because there not exist a, a methodology or some work to evaluating their methods on, on mobile devices. So, 
we we are looking for a, a standard because we we don't have a standard for for this kind of time maybe the time we are processing this 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 image is is good maybe we need more time especially for a, a more faster implementation for especially for real time applications Any other questions, Ricardo? No. Okay, any other questions from our audience? Our yeah, PhD yes, yes. students? I... Yes, Harold? I have a question about the pre-processing. Um, how do you solve the scaling problem um, to uh, the, all the text at different angles and the scaling and so on? Yeah. Have you a different um, network for solving the scaling problem first before you are doing the next uh, processing? Uh, so uh, the only pre-processing procedure that we are performing is rescaling the images. So given an images, we rescale those images for a fixed size, depending on what size of of images are we using in the multi-scale procedure. And then for, for covering those kind of, of scenarios when we have a smaller test or, or long test, we are generating some prior boxes. So we already defined some initial prior boxes for, for starting the, the regression uh, using these, these anchor boxes. and. We, we use it to some aspect radius in order to, to get more, more long uh, bounding boxes and transpose those bounding boxes for covering vertical tests. And the SSD extra layers that, that we use uh, help us to, to work with, with different scales too, because the feature maps that we are using, for example, the, the last one is one per one, maybe I can show here. In this case, the, the last feature map that we use here that came from the single shot detector extra layers is a one by one feature maps. So it's just one feature map from the whole images would uh, help us to, to find uh, the, the bigger object, the bigger text in, in, our, in our images. And the, others, and the other feature maps like three by three, five by five, the, 10 by 10 and 19 by 19, they are trying to help us with uh, producing features for a specific or for, for smaller text. Hmm. Uh, so Manuel, uh, Manuel uh, so using, you are using this neural network for only uh, to find uh, the minimum bounding box or uh, you try also to, it's only for um, um, minimum, bounding, minimum uh, bounding box. Correct. Yes, for now it's just for regression for, for bonding boxes. So it's another point to, to take into account the, the prior boxes because we have defining a set of prior boxes at the beginning from which we start our, our process of, of learning, of learning offset of from using regression. But, but you cannot convert the text into something which can be readable, for example. Sorry, I didn't understand. I mean, you don't you don't convert you don't convert the text inside each uh, bounding box into something for uh, for blind people, for example. So, so now we are working on creating those minimum bounding box around uh, each text. Uh, yes, we at the beginning we we define those those bounding boxes, but we 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 are trying to we are. We're working on, on segmentation too because it's a kind of complementary task. Mm -hmm. But this is a, one of the limitations too because depending on the number of prior boxes that we were using, depending on the aspect rate, the number of aspect rates that we are producing, because if we define a, a, a set of prior boxes that depending on the number of aspect rates that we have, mm -hmm. they they multiply the, the system a, a lot of a lot of prior boxes and these prior boxes are in some way restricting our, our network because we are just defining our learning uh, based on, on those prior boxes. 
and the number of private boxes is impacting too in the in the model size and the and the processing time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I have a question. Uh, we are supposed to use those tiny machine learning models in mobile devices. So my question is about the training process. So we will, we will deploy those in mobile devices and we will we will just infer and we will try to uh, to use it in real life uh, in applications. But in the training process, are you training those models in GPUs, powerful GPUs, without the restrictions which we have in mobile devices? I, I trained uh, all the all the networks in a, a GPU for mm -hmm. the, the, the training stage. Then with, with the final models we we use, we convert some of them depending on the of the framework. If it is PyTorch, TensorFlow, or, or Cafe, mm -hmm. we have to, to do some process in order to, to put these models into the the device. And we create a very basic uh, application for, for running these, these devices. Just okay, so, so just for running the experiments. Mm -hmm. So you are training it without any 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 constraints. You are just training it in a GPU with full accuracy, with resolution, with high frame per second and so on. Exactly. We we train in unconstraining a scenario then we, we pass to the to devices and we Mm -hmm. We measure the the results and the and the frames per second in the mobile devices too. The usually the the results doesn't vary too much in the in the final devices. Mm -hmm. but, but do you think if we can train those models in uh, in each device, for example, with those constraints, do you think is that we might might be the performance will be better in mobile devices when we deploy it? Maybe it could be better, but. Mm -hmm. The results, I, I think, uh, I don't think it is worth into to training in a constrained device because it consumes a lot of time. Maybe just make some kind of fine tune in the in some fewer stages because I really I don't think the the result will be will be very different. Uh, may, may is, yeah, may I comment on that? I, I think, Ibrahim, you can train, but going to take much longer for convergence, you know? Yes. So in, 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 at least in, uh, in the application that you address, I'd like just to state, you know, this um, uh, uh, Manuel didn't uh, mention that, but the initial of his PhD was connected with um, um, a project funded by Samsung. And uh, the idea was to, to perform um, you know, text detection and text recognition in mobile, okay? So, uh, for this application, uh, we don't need to perform a kind of online learning, online training uh, based on, 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 on input from users, but I think this is, a very this is a very nice research venue, okay? So, I'd like to stress that. And another thing is, despite the fact that uh, currently the PhD work of Manuel has not been connected with uh, recognition problems, uh, we we already uh, performed a kind of a very comprehensive um, a comparative study of state-of-the-art recognition approach. We just decided to take this out of his PhDs just to, to have a little bit more focus, okay? Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so this is uh, very, very important. It's, it's just a record of, like uh, raising a child in Switzerland, for example, and asking him to take an exam <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm from Africa, so, not <laughs> so I feel that if you will be raised up in, in the same atmosphere, if we can train the model using mobile devices under those constraints, maybe the model will, will try to to, to perform it better. And when we deploy it in real life, maybe the performance would be a little bit different. So this is my uh, idea. Maybe the, the performance in terms of speed, it, it will be better. There yeah. are approaches or hardware specific implementations that help a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you very much, uh, Manuel. For uh, So any other questions from our uh, audience? We have many students, in fact, they are studying machine learning and uh, many PhDs. So any, any questions from, uh, no more questions? 
thank you very much, uh, uh, Manuel, today for this nice presentation. Yeah. I just I want may to you, advise my. May, uh, may I make a, may I make another comment. I'm sorry, Ibrahim, yeah. uh, because Manuel didn't mention that, but now uh, he's uh, testing his approach for the in the context of the Plastopol project. So some mm. of the students enrolled in computer graphics, they are they are aware of this project because I present this project to them. So do you have any initial results on that, uh, Manuel? Uh, I modify, I prepare some of the algebra and true and the, the data for, for running on, on my network. And I am waiting for, for your results because it's a, a proof of concept. I, yeah. I will know about uh, our network is just specific for tests or, or maybe it, it can can get a good result in, in another area. Yeah, yeah. in fact, uh, I have also a question, Ricardo, because uh, I have a project which I need to start uh, working in. It's mobile device for some also machine vision application. So uh, I'm asking about uh, BLE.net. Uh, is it uh, now uh, in GitHub or it's uh, available? So we, can, uh, we can use it in other projects. Is it in, in GitHub now or it's not published yeah. yet? I mean, the, the PILI is not is not uh, our contribution. You can mention, you can reply, you can respond, uh, uh, Manuel. Uh, I, I had some problem with the audio, but I, I the, think the point is is the PILI the, the yeah. yeah is the PILI network available online? Is your uh, solution available online? No, no, yet. Maybe we could try it later, but it's not available now. The Pili Net itself is available, which is the, the first backbone that we use it, but our approach is not, it's not available yet. Uh, so, so also, I have a question to you, Manuel. Do you have time if we have some small project, a student project or something? So for example, next semester, you can, you can be part from from our team so we can work uh, we have some project with some uh, bachelor groups master groups who are working uh, in machine learning similar to what ricardo is doing as well so do you have time also to be part from uh, such activities at our uh, department yes sure i am always available for, for contributions in yeah. in this area so just mm -hmm. let me know that i will be able for for those for yes. That work. yes i guess uh, we are it's Yes, do you, yeah. do you have something, Ricardo? Yeah, I'd like to mention two things, Ibrahim. The first thing is uh, Manuel is is now, we, uh, we established that uh, conversation with Mauricio, Mauricio Bretenitz from Portugal. Do you remember you joined in the proposal we submitted on, on um, plastic detection uh, with Portugal? And uh, we have the plan, if possible, if we have this funding from a Brazilian funding agency, Manuel would spend some time in Portugal and maybe Manuel could visit us at some moment uh, next, next year. So we should keep that in mind. You know, I think he can collaborate in many projects, but also he could visit us at some moment. And another thing that I'd like to ask you to, to include in your agenda is to see how we can implement in the future uh, you know, co to tell or, or double diploma uh, um, procedures. And so that, you know, students like Manuel and some others from different and uh, universities could also take uh, a PhD diploma, not only from their university, but also from NTNU. So I think it would be very important for our department and for our research group if we could learn how to implement this. Okay. Yeah. Also, in fact, uh, next uh, next year we will have more courses. Uh, I'm working now on uh, a new PhD course in machine learning, and it would be nice, really, to invite also Manuel to take part on, give some courses, some training, for example, and it would be really very very useful for us. Sure. Sure. So thank you very much, Manuel, for this very nice presentation. I was looking forward to it because we have lots of work in in this direction. I, I try to. Mm move into that direction. In fact, I have in my mind two projects, small projects, and I'm waiting for uh, some students to select those projects next semester. So we will contact again and we will work together, publish together. And uh, we are so appreciated for your time today and for uh, this very nice presentation. And uh, for you, Ricardo, also for uh, I mean, proposing uh, Manuel for this nice presentation today. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for the for the invitation. Um, I am always available for some kind of contribution. Thank you very much.
Uh, Manuel, before we close, uh, we recorded this one in YouTube. Uh, so is it okay to share it with the students in Blackboard? And we have our platform or should we keep it in YouTube? It's in my channel, in fact. So if you have okay. any, okay. So this is very good because uh, I will share it with my students. Maybe we will go back to it. Um, when we start working in those projects, it will be very good material for us. Okay, no problem for me, it's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So thank you very much uh, all for uh, joining us in our research seminar today. And uh, after two weeks, we will have another research seminar. And next time we will have uh, Hamad. He is our PhD student in social robots. Next time he will be presenting something about human robot interaction. Um, with some maybe practical ex experiment and uh, some early results from his PhD. So thank you very much for joining us today and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you all. See bye you. Bye. Thanks for coming.